Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. We are talking about entering into God's rest. Praise God. Now, before going to today's broadcast, are you ready? Are you, are you ready? Now, now, it's important. You know, recently the Lord, the Lord began to lay it in my heart to, to teach on certain things that are very vital because of what a lot of God's children are going to be facing in the coming days. So these things I'm teaching to you, I'm teaching you, please take it seriously. Some of you need to sit down with notes and make notes out of them and do your study. Open your heart and pray to God about them. Let him speak to you. But I tell you this more than ever before, you must learn to demand your daily bread. And when I say demand, don't just pay lip service to it. Don't just just say, Father, I, I demand my daily bread. And then that's all. Your heart must go into the words you're speaking. Yeah. So are you ready to release your faith now? Say, Father, today and right now, I make a demand for my daily bread. I receive it from you. Heaven is moving on my behalf, bringing me supplies today. It doesn't matter the job that I do. No, go ahead and say it. It doesn't matter the job I do. It doesn't matter whether I have a job or not. I receive from heaven my daily bread in Jesus name amen praise God listen a miracle is taking place there's, there's, there's a miracle of supply that is coming your way praise God thank you Holy Spirit oh thank you Holy Spirit yes yeah, so we're talking about entering God's rest there is a rest for the people of God. And I'll share with you yesterday that every word that comes out of God's mouth is so important and it will all be fulfilled. Every one of it. I showed you an example yesterday about how God spoke to Abraham. And after over 500 years, he by himself, he says he watch, watches over his words to perform them. He watches over his word to perform. You see, if you speak about everything that has to do with you, God has spoken words. God is a, I always say this, God is a talkative. Praise God, permit me to use that phrase. Now, I don't mean it in the bad. I mean, he's always talking. He's always talking. Imagine someone speaking for six days. Six days. No, no, let there be lights. Okay, and there's lights now. Let the farmers under the heavens gather. No, nah, no, nah, he was speaking and speaking. Every detail, the color of the skies, the size of the sun, the size of the stars. He spoke every one of them. Where they should stay, the ones that he spoke, every one of them, the size of the earth, everything, the, the, the layers of the mountains, he spoke every one. He did. And in time, every one of it, they are all being fulfilled. And he is in rest. Praise God. Watching all these things come to pass just like he said it. So he has entered into his rest. And he is commanding you. It is time to enter, not into your own rest. Enter into his rest. Are you getting the picture? So he rested on the seventh day. And he says, that rest, there is still space for you. To come rest from all your labors. <laughs> How do I rest with him? I find out what he has said. Alabus. <laughs> hey, Lananda. No, now you, you see, 
hand. Yeah. It's not just the physical activity. When he says labor to enter into his rest, what's he saying? Labor in the word to find out what he has said. And when you find out what he has said, the job of your labor begins. And what is it? Aligning your mind to agree that this thing he said is true. Now that's hard work if you don't know what I'm talking about. And many people are, are not able to do this work. To them, it seems it's easier to carry out physical activities than to believe God. And let me show you some scriptures, for example. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ecclesiastics, Ecclesiastics, Ecclesiastics. Oh, Halabashakaya. Ecclesiastics chapter 2. I want you to watch this. Verse 26, for God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy to a man who is good in his sight. Now, nobody's presenting this man to God and say, God, this man is good. Give him something. No, he says the man is good in God's sight. So God locates the good man. And when he locates the good man, he takes the liberty to give him these things. And what are they? Wisdom, knowledge, and joy. That is what God gives to a man who is good in his sight. So God looks at this man and qualifies him as good. Maybe by his actions or maybe by his creation. But God looks at this man and qualifies him to be good. So this man is good in God's sight. And what does God give to him? Wisdom, knowledge, and joy. It didn't stop there. Look at what he said next. But to the sinner, he, that is God, gives. So God gives to the one that is good in his sight. And then he also gives to the sinner. Now take note of what he gives to this, these two people. The one who's good in his sight, he supplies him with knowledge, wisdom, and joy. The sinner, he gives the work of gathering and collecting. But do you know the truth? The one who's good in his sight that is ignorant looks at the sinner and begins to envy the sinner. Because the one who's good in God's sight goes before the Lord and says, God, give me something. Says, All right, I'll give you something. Hey, you know what? When I created the earth, this is what I spoke, and this is what I did, and this is what I said. You know, like they say in, in local palace, now that one will go chop. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? But, but hey, God, Lord. And God comes and said, yeah, you know, in, in, in Genesis chapter 2, when I told Abraham this, this is actually what I meant. I'm hungry. God, I'm hungry. And he steps out and he finds that fellow who is a sinner. He knows this fellow, you're a bad guy. He, he knows he will not go to church. He will not pray. He will even curse God. And that fellow tells him that, hey, man. Ah, God did one wonder for me yesterday. He'll say, what did you do, man? I saw... I saw where I could, I saw somebody, I outsmarted somebody and I, I made $10 million. Like, how? I, I didn't move an inch, just in my house. What? Ah, no, no, don't worry, they'll never catch me. It's not like it's, I didn't, it's, nobody will even see it as a real crime. I just played smart. How did you do it? It's God now, it's God now. You know, we get to that point where believers begin to wonder, is, is it that God doesn't like to give me things? Oh, I'm showing you the secret. So you begin to despise what God gives to you and begin to be envious of the sinner. Because you look at him, he's driving the latest car. You, what do you have? The latest revelation. 
You look at the sinner, he is building his house. You, what do you have? A vision of lands and, and scriptures that God has spoken about lands and houses. The sinner seems to be doing well. Hey, listen to me. It is God that has empowered him to be doing that. Why? Look at it. Look at it. But to the sinner, he gives the work of gathering and collecting that he, that's the sinner, that he may give to him who is good before God. So everything that sinner is gathering and heaping up, he is preparing it to give to one to whom God has said, you are good before me and I have been giving you wisdom, knowledge and joy. He said, really? Yes. Um, so I have this friend as an unbeliever. He's just making money. I mean, I've just been praying, praying. So is God going to transfer? The fact is, number one, do you, are you good in the sight of God, not in your own sight? And, and it is not for you to look at your neighbor and say, this guy is gathering these things for me. And then you start praying, Father, his new car, I will receive it. His new house is building, I will take it. That's, that's, that's wrong. <laughs> it's God that will determine who gets what. Praise God. All you need to know or to do is to make sure that you are good in his sight. And here, here's what the scripture says. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So when he says the one who's good in God's sight, he's talking about the one who's walking by faith. The one who's receiving the word of the Lord and keeping his word. That's the one he's talking about. You see that now? So now here, you find God have made provision for the one who's good in his sight. Incidentally, that provision is created by the one who's not good in God's sight, by the one who God's con God considers to be a sinner. That sinner creates all the wealth, creates all the things, and, and eventually he's going to hand it over to the one who is good in God's sight. The one who's good in God's sight is God's beloved. Am I right? Let me show you another scripture. Oh, Braila Azozea, Megro Tevile Ketebe. Book of Psalms. I exalt your who. Alabaya Kasha. Psalm chapter 127, Psalm 127. I want you to watch this now. He says, verse 2. He says, It is vain for you. Now, this you he's talking about, he's talking about you who's good in God's sight. Now, he says, for it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrow. For so he gives his beloved sleep. So, his beloved, he gives him sleep. God gives his beloved sleep. Now, when he says he gives his beloved, many years ago, we used to quote this scripture whenever we wanted to sleep. Father, I, I'm so tired, I want to sleep, but sleep is not coming. Lord, you give your beloved sleep. So I receive sleep from you now, in Jesus' name. Until I saw the truth of this scripture, I screamed, praise God. I said, what? Let me read the Amplified Version for you. It says, it is vain, Psalm 1 to 7 verse 2. It is vain for you to rise up early, to take rest late, to eat the bread of anxious toil. For he, that's God, gives blessings to his beloved in sleep. God gives blessings to his beloved, to the one who is good in his sight. God gives blessings to him in sleep. Let me read another translation for you. Ha Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me read the 
C E V. Good. It is useless. That's C E V now. It is useless to get up early and stay up late in order to earn a living. Is it? It is useless. Trying to earn a living by overworking yourself. It says it is useless. Now, useless means useless. It's not useful. You cannot use it. That's what it means. So it says it is useless to get up early and sleep late in order to earn a living. Why? Why? Because God takes care of his own even while they sleep. Now, this is a principle of God's word. David said this because the word of the Lord came to him. So, it is from this that Jesus came up with what he said. Take no thought for your life, but seek the kingdom and its righteousness. So he's telling Jesus, and seek to please God, brothers and sisters. So when you please God, what would God give you? Wisdom, knowledge, and joy. <laughs> Be careful the things you pray for and the things you earnestly seek. So God is giving you wisdom, knowledge, and joy, and you're not satisfied. You're like, God, oh, no, it's not fair. Look at all these unbelievers, they are prospering. Look at this one. I know what things he does, but why not, why not destroy the work of their hands? Why not? But look at me, I tried to start a business, it didn't work. I tried to do this, it didn't, it didn't work because that's not your calling. And this doesn't mean God wants us lazy. No. No, 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 no. You can't please God and be lazy, brothers and sisters. Because the one who pleases God, his life is going to be super busy. You know why? Man, it takes work to hear the voice of God. <laughs> God. It takes work to obey God. It takes work to walk with God in obedience. Because he's speaking to you all the time. You know, people think work is, I wake up in the morning, wear my suit, wear my tie, get into the car, drive to the office, sit down, do some paperwork. As, as fantastic as that looks. Here is a fellow who wakes up in the morning and he's, he's thinking of, and then he hears the word of the Lord. He said, yesterday, you didn't speak well to that fellow. Mm. But yeah, this is exactly what you said. Okay, sir. I want you to call that person up and apologize to him. Ah, ah, okay, Lord. I've understood. I've heard. Must I call? call that person up and apologize to the person? But I'm going to look small. It's going to make me look somehow. Yes, that's what I want you to do. Hey, but Lord, call that person. Up. Now you can struggle with this for the next two, three hours. But you find out that you don't have any rest. You can't even move forward in anything until you pick up your phone and call and say, Hey, how, how are you doing? So fine. Yeah, yesterday uh, we had some issues and I'm just calling to apologize. I, I didn't speak right to you. Can you please forgive me? And then the person was wrong. Oh. The person goes, Yeah, I, I know it will come to this. I know it's going to I and I. You be like, Look at this fellow. And God says, don't say a word. <sighs> I'm telling you, that by the time he's done with you, I mean, God, you'll be so exhausted. <laughs> now, someone looks at you and says, what has this guy done today? He didn't leave his house. He's been at home all day. These other fellows went to work in the morning and now they are coming back from work in the evening. They are working. This guy is not working. <laughs> but this guy was busy. Lord, why? Something is not just right today. What's going on? And God begins to say, say yesterday you did something I don't like. Oh Lord, I'm so sorry. What's it? This is it, this is it. Now he begins to deal with that. He begins to deal with his heart. He begins, now, do you know what he's doing? He's doing exactly what Jesus said. Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. Now, God is leading him into seeking the kingdom. God is leading him to his righteousness. And he says, all these things shall be 
added to it. Because, because you see, even Christians think the work of God is going around everywhere preaching. There are lots of people that are going around preaching that are not doing the work of God. Jesus made us know that. He says, on that day, I'll say to them, I never knew you. <laughs> Do you know what? He said, we, we did miracles. Yeah, but I never knew you. But those who are doing his work, he knows them. And he's giving to them these three things, wisdom, knowledge, and joy. You know why he's doing that to them? He's preparing them to receive the thing that shall be added to them. Praise God. My time is up today. Glory. Are you enjoying this? I'll see you tomorrow. I pray the Lord manifests himself in your life today. Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Bye.